Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to today's service in the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. May the Lord bless the hearers today. May the word of God produce result today in the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. Today is the second week of the month of February, and we are going to part two of Jesus is passing by. Jesus is passing by. Today's topic is obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Be, at, be, 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 be receptive in the spirit to know when God is passing by your, by your side so that you will not be able, so that you will not miss, you will not miss the, 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 the blessings of God. May God help us to know when he is visiting us. May God help us to know when it is time for us to key into the word of God. And I bless the Lord that today the ears of my hearers shall be opened to the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today, obedience is better than sacrifice. If you want to serve the Lord, you must obey the voice of the Lord. The Lord speaks to each and every one of us in one way or the other. But the problem is that we do not recognize that it is the Lord speaking. And so today, Jesus is passing by through this word, through this message this morning. Jesus is passing by your, by your side. And I believe that you will not miss it. You will not miss him. You will not be left behind. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I want us to go to the book of Second Kings, chapter four. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Second Kings, chapter four, and I'm going to read from verse one. Now the cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen, to be servants. This was the story of a man that served God in truth and in spirit. This is the family of a man, a pastor, a prophet, an assistant pastor or assistant prophet to prophet Elisha. This man served the Lord in truth and in spirit with all his heart, but according to this story here, and it happened life on the face of this earth. But we are telling it as a story because we need to learn from experience. We need to learn from those who have experienced God in one way or the other. And so this woman was the wife of this uh, um, associate prophet or associate pastor to prophet Elijah. This associate pastor was called unto the Lord. But because I don't know what happened, maybe he did not accept the message of prosperity. Maybe that was how God wanted him to live and die. Just serve him in truth and in spirit and die. For the most important thing is that at the end of your sojourn on this earth, you will be able to make heaven at last. And so this man died. This pastor died. This pastor walked with Elisha in his ministry. And this man, before he died, he was indebted. He was indebted. He had a lot of debts piled up for him. And he didn't pay this debt before he died. And so the creditors came to the wife to demand for the money. And because there was no money left behind for this family, 
for the family of this prophet. And, you know, some creditors are always asking for a pound of flesh. They will not understand the situation you are in. And so, at this moment, this creditor, the man, was asking for the money. But the money was not there. And so, the man requested and asked that he was going to take the two sons of the man. The two sons that the man left behind. The two sons that the, that the, um, the prophet left behind. The man who served God in truth and in spirit, but ended up in penury. Ended up, I don't know why it was so, but you know, many want to make heaven without, um, without achieving anything on this earth. That is good. But it became a problem to the family when this man left. It became a problem to the family. And the wife cried unto the pastor, unto Pastor Elijah, or Prophet Elijah. Praise the Lord. He ran to Prophet Elijah and said something is happening in, his, in her house. Something is happening in her house. Creditors have come to take her sons and the two sons of the man who served you. Elisha, please, I don't know whether you can help us out of this. I don't know. And it's like Elijah said, if the Lord cannot help you, how can I help you? But the, the man of God in the spirit consulted, communed with God, and God told the man of God what to tell the woman, how to answer the woman, that the woman will be settled. Whatever you tell the woman to do, if she does it, she will be settled. For her to understand that obedience is better than sacrifice. Praise the Lord. And in verse 2, Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And the woman said, Thy handmaid had nothing, not anything in the house, except a pot of oil, a little cruise of oil, a little cruise of palm oil, a little cruise, a little pint of oil. That is the only thing in the house. And that means that this family has been living in hunger. Children of God, it is not in the agenda of God that you will go hungry serving him. Something must have gone wrong. Maybe the man did not follow the rules of the spirit. Maybe the man thought that there is only the people of the world that ought to have money to take care of themselves. I don't know the perception of, uh, of, uh, of what led to the situation in the house. But what I want you to understand is that this family was wallowing in abject poverty, even while serving the Lord. And this woman had nothing in the house, not even a cup of Gary, not even a cup of rice, nothing except a small cruise of oil. I think what this woman does was that at the end of the day, he would touch, he will, he, will, he, will, he will touch the oil and touch her tongue and touch the tongues of the two children. I don't know how they were living. But the woman said that she had nothing in the house except a pot of oil. A pot of oil, a small pot of oil. And the man of God said in verse 3, Go and borrow the vessels. Borrow vessels from neighborhood. Borrow vessels from abroad. Borrow, borrow vessels from anywhere you can lay a house of vessels. For God is about to change your testimony. For God is about to change situations in your family. For the Spirit of God is passing by. Jesus is passing by. 
Jehovah is passing by and he will pass through your house as you obey even at this moment. Go borrow vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow. Do not borrow few. Borrow as many as you can. Make sure that you have enough vessels, enough, enough, uh, um, um, what do you call it, containers, enough drums of oil, enough drums, because that your small oil that is in the house, the Lord is going to breathe into it, and it is going to transform your life. This was the perception, and this was the message that the man of God got. This was the message that the man of God got from God. And when thou art coming, when you come into your house, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out into all those vessels that you are going to borrow. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. Anyone that is full, you set them aside. Just go into your house and make sure you borrow vessels from neighbors. Not only the vessels that you have, not only the containers that you have in the house, not only the drums that you have in the house. Go to your neighbors, go abroad, go away, far away from, borrow from all the neighbors and make sure that you borrow enough. Go and borrow, 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 borrow the vessels, borrow the vessels. Go and ask neighbors to give you drums of oil, drums, any drums that you can lay your hands on. Go as far as you can. Make sure that you borrow vessels. And when you come into the house, just shut the door. Shut the door. Do not allow anything to distract you. Shut the door. Do not allow any neighbor to come in. Do not allow any doubt to come in. Shut the door against the doubts in your heart. Shut the door of, of negative thought. Shut the door of disappointment. Shut the door of smallness in your mind and in your heart. Just obey me and you will see the hand of the Lord. This woman expected the man of God to give her money to settle the debt that was accrued unto the husband before the husband died so that she could have the children free because the children are now to be taken away from her and made slaves in the house of the creditors because of how much nobody knew but in this case god wanted to enlarge the cost of this family but something went wrong somewhere in verse 5 she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons whom she sent to go and bring the vessels after all it is them that want to that are to be taken away not her is them that will be taken so the woman went and sat down very lazy this woman may have contributed to the poverty of the man of god to the poverty of the husband who died and left problems for the entire family this woman went and sat down disobeyed the man of god and sent the children to go and get vessels from neighbors maybe he started nagging and saying this man of god could not help this pastor could not help me all that he could answer me is to go and borrow vessels all that this man of god that my husband served could say to me was to go and borrow vessels to go and borrow from neighbors imagine to go and disgrace myself imagine after my husband has served this man this pastor is so wicked this church is a wicked church 
the woman began to nag, shut the door, and began to talk, chop, 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 began to complain against the man of God. And that is why she could not go outside to go and borrow vessels according to the direction of the prophet. Only the children went outside to go and get some vessels. The children, they, at least they tried. At least they tried. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out. Thank God these children were able to go and bring some vessels. They brought only six cans, six jerry cans. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet another vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel anymore left. You know what happened? The Bible said that the oil ceased flowing, stopped flowing. What a myopic mentality some Christians have. They want men to help them. All that they want is from man, from man, not from God. Even in the house of God today, so many people go to the house of God, they are not asking God to bless them. Even when they pray and ask God to bless them, their minds are in men. They would want the pastor to leave what he is supposed to do and begin to raise money to bless members. Whereas God is available there. The Spirit of the Lord is there moving. Seeking whom to help, whom to whom to whom to to, to to bless, and instead men who claim to be serving God, they are focusing their eyes on man. The Bible says in verse six, and it came to pass that when the vessels were full, that the woman began to ask for more vessels, but the vessels. We are no longer there. Only six jerrycans that the children brought, we are the only jerrycans that we are full. And the oil stopped flowing. The blessings of God will continue to flow in your life based on the trust, based on the obedience you have to the word of God. We need to obey God. We need to obey the word of God. And not what the social media is feeding into your head. That the pastors are not helping. The church is not helping. This one is not helping. They want your mind to be moved away from God. So that you will focus on men. And when you no longer have trust in God, but you have trust in men, you will be completely and totally disappointed. This woman was disappointed that there were no more vessels. But I thank God that the vessels that these children brought were able to save them from being taken into slavery by the creditors. And in verse 7, then she went, she came and told the man of God. And the man of God said unto her, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and leave thou and thy children of the rest. And the woman came, sold the oil, had enough money, paid the debt, and the remaining one, she began to live with that. Only God knows how long that one will last in her house. Because of what? Disobedience. Because of what your heart, what your heart is receiving from how other men of God are helping others and their, their, their church is not helping you and you are missing out because you are putting your trust in man. Brother, sister, I want you to put your trust in God. May this war 
find a place in your heart to reconsider how you take man and how you take God. It is God first. If God wants to use man, that man cannot even resist it. You don't even need to go to that man for help before the man is compared and pushed to come and help you. But by the time you remove your eyes from God and start focusing your eyes on men, you will be disappointed. It's not a cause, but it is a spiritual principle. Obedience is better than sacrifice. In another day, in verse 8, some other thing happened that we have to learn from. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem to go and evangelize. As an evangelist, he, he passed to Shunem. He goes to Shunem to preach the word of God, to win souls, to do evangelism. Where was a great woman known as a Shunammite woman in the Bible. Because this man of God, this man of God with the, uh, uh, his, his members, and he had only one member anyway. <laughs> he had only one member. <laughs> you that you are going to, to the, <laughs> you are going to Babalawa to get <laughs> crowd pulling charms. You want to get crowd pulling charms. You want to bury the head of a pig in your church. You want to bury cows in, the, in your church. You want to bury cowries. You want to go and carry charms to do ministry, to do church. Because you, you, you think that uh, you, you are the one who will win the whole world to, to, to heaven. And because of that, you go and you, you go, you go and uh, you go and get out more pop. In order, in, order, in order to win souls, you'll be deceiving us that you are winning souls. Your church is one million members, the souls you are winning. But because of what you have done for, for that crowd to come, both you and the souls are heading to hell. Both you and the members that are operating under the canopy of Satan because of your greed. All of you are heading to hell. For light and darkness has nothing in common. Light and darkness has nothing in common. And this one is not, a, I, don't, I didn't know that the man is, is doing this and that. You have to ask God for the spirit of discernment. Before they use your own head to bring crowd to their church. You have to be very, 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 very careful. Through this message this morning, Jesus is passing by you, reminding you that this world is now full, full of, I, I don't know, I don't know, full of the things that are too despicable in the church, full of wickedness, even in the body of Christ. You have to be very. Elisha had only one member, and that one member was one of his assistant pastors. You that you are a pastor, you want to pull crowd, and members, the so-called members, are pushing you. They are the, even the one directing you and showing you ways how to grow the church, and you follow them, and they handed you over to Babala so that. The Babalawo can do something and all of you will gang up and, and gather money from, from congregants, from people. And then you, you share. And then it becomes secret between all of you. And that day, you that you are overseeing the work will be accountable. Not even those who showed you the way. Because some members are responsible for what the pastors are doing, the wrongs that the pastors are doing. But they will be the ones to run out to begin to shout that this man is evil. 
Because light and darkness, <laughs> they can't work together. And if a child, if a child of God there, if the hand of God is massively upon that person, it will take that person out. And so, it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained them to eat bread, to eat food, and so it was, that as often as he passed by, he turned in Tita to eat food. Anytime the man of God and the light and the Gehazi, one of his assistants, maybe his member, when they got to anytime they got to Shunem, they will go to this woman's house to eat because the woman will always prepare food for them. You that you 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 prepare food for men of God in one way or the other, you sow seed, you pay tithe, you give offering, you support the man of God in the mission. The Lord will remember you today, for the Lord is passing by and is looking at registers of people who are helping to advance the cause of the gospel. Those of you who are helping in this platform, who are helping in one way or the other. The Lord will not pass you by. The Lord will not pass you by. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Bible said that any time that Elisha and Gehazi will go to Shunem, they will pass through the woman's house in order to eat food. In order to eat food. And in verse 9, And she said unto the husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God. Quit pass by us continually. This man always passes through our house to bless us. To bless us. This is the way this woman understood the reason why they come. The woman did not say that these people always come to eat food. No. The woman said, I perceive that this man is a holy man of God. This man always passes to, through this house. Each time he comes around to, uh, to evangelize, this woman passes through our house. And I perceive that this, this man is a holy man of God. It's not like those who just want to to, to mess around with people. And in verse 10, let us make a little chamber. I pray thee, my husband, on the wall, let us create a small room for them. Even if it is using something to just partition one place on the wall, so that when they come, they will sleep there. So that they, when before they proceed, they can sleep there. They can rest there. He spoke to the husband. And you know, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it shall be that when he comes to us, that he shall turn in Tita to rest. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. They eventually gave them one room, prepared a small room for them, for Elisha. And so one day they came and they went into that place to rest. They went into that place to rest. They went to, they went to sleep there. And in verse 12, the man of God said to Gehazi, his servant, the only member of his team, the only member of his church, called this Shunammite woman. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, 
Shema unto her. The man of God told Gehazi, speak to this woman. Tell her, behold, there has been careful. Thou has been careful for us. You have been caring for us all this while. And with this care, what is to be done for thee? This care, this thing that you are doing for us in our evangelism, in our ministry, what do you want us to do for you? What would, what is to be done to you? What can we do? We can only pray, but we know that God will answer you. Would thou, would thou be spoken for to the king? Or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. The man of God began to ask, please ask this woman, what can, what can be done to this woman? This woman has been taking care of us. This woman has been helping us in ministry. That they, they even went ahead to give us a room to sleep. Give us food to eat. Give us room to sleep. What can we do to this woman? Can we go and talk to the king? Or to the captain of the host? And the woman said, I have... I dwell among my own people. I dwell with my own people. So I'm from here. They are my people. You are a stranger. You are just an evangelist. You are here to bless us. So there's nothing, nothing, nothing. Don't worry about us. We are okay. And he said, what then is to be done for her? He asked Gehazi. And Gehazi answered, Verily she had no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said unto her, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, No, my Lord. Thou man of God, please leave that part. Leave that, leave that, leave that. God can just keep me alive. I have tried. I, I have met many men of God. They have prayed, bishops, prophets. They have said almost the same thing you are saying now. Doctors have done a lot to help us. And so it is not possible. So man of God, this prophecy, don't use it to confuse me so that uh, I will not hate you because of uh, fake prophecy. Do not lie to me. Do not lie to me. Do not lie unto thy handmaid. And verse 17, and the woman conceived according to Elisha. And bear a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. Just that spoken word. Oh my God. God embarrassed the family with fruit of the womb, with a blessing, with a child, with a boy. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. Now listen. The man of God spoke a word and it came to pass. They fired other, 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 other prophecies, other prayers that were made that did not come to pass. Mesmerize the woman's belief that God will not help them. Mesmerize the woman's belief that it is over. And God through Elisha proved 
to her that the small room, the food that she gives to this man of God shall never be in vain. And God gave her a son. I see God giving you what you are looking for. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God will give you what you are looking for. Another problem arose from verse 18. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. They went. He went to see his fathers where they are reaping, where they are harvesting. And he said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to a lad, carry him to his mother. I don't know why this boy came to farm. We are farming here. Carry him to his mother, please. This boy is disturbing me. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. This blessing, the enemy attacked the blessing. But you know what? In as much as God answered a man of God, he will still answer. He will still answer. The guy died. This child died. And she went up. She didn't worry. Though she's in pain. And she ran and led him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. I told this man not to pray for a child for me. Now another level of sorrow has come. Another level of pain has come. Let me just put this child in his in his bed and in his room so that you come and, and uh, I didn't ask for this child. This man just released and God answered. How can God answer me and bring tears in my eyes again? No, 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 no. I don't want to cry. I have cried enough. I have cried enough. Oh my God. And she called unto her husband and said, send me, I pray thee, one of your cars, one of your drivers, and, and one of the cars that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, wherefore will thou go to find, to look for him? Today, it is neither new moon that he normally comes around, nor Sabbath. And she said, it shall be well. Hallelujah. It shall be well, brother. It shall be well, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That blessing that God has prepared for you will not elude you as you continue to put your trust in God. And so she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Camel. That was where he found the man of God. And it came to pass that when the man of God saw her afar off in the spirit, that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite woman. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her. Go and welcome her, please. And say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, It is well. Obedience is better than sacrifice. It is well. This week, let this word be in your mouth. No matter what comes your way, let it be, it is well. And it shall be well. The man of God said, 
Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? How come? How did you find this place? How did you know that we are in Mount Carmel? Pray. How? What is going on? There must be something wrong. And the woman said, it is well. Brother, sister, I prophesy to you, and that your disappointment, and that your situation, and that matter that you think you, you will not come out of it, it is well in the name of Jesus Christ. It is well with your soul. It is well with you in that matter. It is well with you in that situation. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will never be put to shame. You will never be disappointed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God will always be there. God will always help you. God will always take control. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my God. And then, in verse 24, she saddled an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. I am not here because of Gehazi. It was not Gehazi who prayed. It was the man of God. He just told Gehazi that it is well. And the driver saddled fast. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. Keep speeding. Do not slow down until I ask you to slow down. And so in verse 25, she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Camel. And it came to pass that when the man of God saw her far off, that he said to Gehazi, he saw her, Behold, yonder is that man, that woman of Shunem. Run now, I pray thee, in verse 26, to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with a child? And she said, It is well. And when she came to the man of God, to the hill, or to the mountain, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to remove her, to push her away. And the man of God said to Gehazi, Leave her alone, for her soul is vexed. She is angry. She is troubled within her. And the Lord had hidden it from me. And had not told me why this woman is here at this moment. Then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I ask you to pray to God to give me a son? Did I not say to you, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, guard up thy loins and take my staff in thy hand. <laughs> And go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any man salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of that child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, man of God, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi ran and passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child but there was neither voice nor hearing wherefore he went again to meet the man of god as told him saying the child is not awake and when elisha was come into the house and behold the child was completely dead and laid upon his bed, <laughs> upon Elijah's bed, and Elisha, upon Elisha's bed, and Elisha went in therefore, and shut the door upon them too, and prayed unto the Lord, 
and he went up and laid up the child and laid upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and there was a transfer of power and his hands upon his hands and he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm again power moved from the man of god elisha and began to warm the body of the dead child. And then he returned and walked in the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him again. And power went from him to the child, and the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. I see every good thing that is dead in your life coming back alive. Because Jesus is touching you at this moment in the realm of the Spirit, Jesus is passing by and he has remembered you. There is a hand that is stretched from heaven upon you and your family. There is a stretching of the Spirit of God like a lash stretched upon the tide. Something is stretching upon your family. The Spirit of God is stretching upon your family for a healing, for deliverance, for something testimonial to begin to happen in your life. And then she said, my God, in verse 36, and he called Gehazi and said to Gehazi, Call this Shunammite woman for me. And so he called her, and when she was come into the room unto him, he said, Take up thy son, great woman, for the Lord has remembered you, for the Lord has passed through the child, and something good has happened. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground, and took up her son, and went out. And Elisha came again to Giga, and there was death there, my God. Something good is happening, something good is taking place, even in your lives today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I want us to go to Genesis chapter, chapter 18. I want to read from verse 1. Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. I want to read from verse 1. And the Lord appeared unto him, unto our father Abraham in the place of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes, and he looked, and lo, three men stood by him. Jesus is passing by you. Jesus came with the host of heavens to visit Father Abraham. I see a visitation from heaven coming to your house for Jesus is passing by and he will not pass by your house. The man of God, whenever he is passing by, whenever he is going to Shunem, whenever he goes to Shunem, he will pass by the house of the Shunammite woman. And through that passing by, the Shunammite woman had a son that she lost hope of having a child in her life. Now it is your turn. Now it is your turn. Today it is your turn. This month it is your turn. The same Jesus came to Father Abraham. And Father Abraham was receptive in the spirit to understand that the three men that were standing by, that stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground, knowing that Jesus Christ and the host of heavens, they have visited him. The host of heaven will visit you, brother. The host of heaven will visit you, sister, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and Abraham said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. Pass me not by. Pass me not by. 
I want you to write it down as you share this message that say, pass me not by, Lord. Oh, Lord, pass me not by. Just write it and say, Lord, pass me by as you share this message. Share it and share it to people as you write, pass me by. That will be the heading of the, as you are sharing it, oh, Lord, pass me not by. And Abraham said, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass me not by. Pass me not by, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet. Just like what the Shunammite woman did. He gave them bread, he gave them water. Ah, Mali Graboza. He gave the man of God, Elisha, a place to sleep. And the Lord visited the Shunammite woman. And Abraham knows that this is a divine principle. If you want the Lord to visit you, you must do something. You must do something as a token so that when the eyes of the Lord beholds that token, something will, be, will, will, will take place so fast. Something will take place so fast. This man called Solomon did it. When he offered a thousand burnt offering, heaven came down to his house. Because they looked at the offering and they saw that this man was not someone to overlook. When you, when you offer sacrifice in the church, know that you are giving it to the Lord. That the Lord is seeing and watching. When you bless a man of God, know that you are doing it for the Lord. That the Lord is watching. Ah, and Abraham said, Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched so that I can wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree so that you can have a place to rest. Because I know that you cannot come into my house like the house of the Shunammite woman, like Elisha went to the house of the Shunammite woman. I know that this is the host of heaven. You do not need a house to sleep. You do not need a bed to lie on. But let your feet be washed so that you can rest under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort you, your hearts, so that you will bless me. Because I know you are here to bless me. Because I know you are here. You are here. You are here to turn things around in my life. Oh, Lord, I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort you your hearts. After that, you shall pass on. You can start moving. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, so do as thou hast said. Do what you have said. That which you want to do, do it now, so that we bless you so fast. So that will bless you so fast. Remember that a seed that you sow because of God, not because of man, not because of you want people to see you, not because you, you, you are compared and you don't complain. Remember, a reward comes from it. And Abraham hastened. He was in a hurry. He hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal. Dress it up and make cakes upon the head. And Abraham ran unto the head and fetched a good, a good calf. Fetched a good calf, tender and good. And gave it unto a young man to go and kill and dress the calf. Dress the goat, dress the, dress the ram. So that this... <laughs> this August visitors, this February visitors, <laughs> we eat and be happy. And he hastened to dress it. And he took butter, a la brogade de la bonda, and milk, and a calf which he had dressed, and set it before the visitors who are at the tent. He set it before Jesus and, and his entourage. And he stood by them 
under the tree, and they did eat. They ate. My friend, God eats. <laughs> God eats. You can give God something to eat. When you give to a man of God to eat, you are giving God something to eat. The Bible said that they did eat. They ate. The angels that visited Abraham, they ate food. They ate food, drank milk, ate butter, calf, meat. They ate. And they said unto him, Where is now thy wife Sarah? It is time for reward. It is time for blessing. Where is your wife, Sarah? Where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, Behold, he, she is in the tent. He is in the house. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee. Mm -hmm. Jesus is speaking to somebody today. He said unto Abraham, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. The same way he spoke through Elisha to the Shunammite woman, according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. Malin Grabosa. Thank you, Jesus. All hope is not lost after all. I know. All hope is not lost. I know that one day. You will visit me. I know that one day you will visit my family. Let this be in your mind that Jesus will visit you one day. God will visit you one day. Hallelujah. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to what it means that I will certainly visit you. According to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah, they were very old, and we are stricken in age. And he ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Sarah had reached more than menopause. More than menopause. And therefore Sarah laughed within herself and said, after I am wax old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord, being old also, how can this be? Where was God when I was young? Where was this prophecy when I was young? Where these people, where, what are they talking about? When I was still a, a young lady, when I was in my 20s, my 30s, my 40s, it did not come. Even when I was in my 50s, 60s, it did not come. So until I'm nine, what is this? What are these people talking about? Until I'm 90. How can this be? The woman laughed and laughed and laughed. Brother, sister, under the sound of my voice, it is not over yet. The Lord will visit you. Jehovah will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it is not over yet. Sarah laughed. I said, when I was young, this kind of prophecy did not come. When I was 20, when I was 30-something, when I was 40-something, 50-something, 60-something, it did not come. 70-something, no prophecy like this. 80 something or the um, what is what please um he, 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 she, she just laughed 90 years how many years remain for me to die 90 years there is an assignment that god sent you to achieve on this earth you will accomplish them you will not die young. You will not die. Even when you are 100 years, you look like 30 years. For the Lord takes pleasure in blessing his, in beautifying lives. Verse 13. 
And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Look at why is Sarah laughing? <laughs> Say, shall I, shall, shall I of a short be a child which I'm old when I'm old? Why is Sarah laughing? Has she forgotten that I am the ancient of this? Has she forgotten that there is nothing too difficult for me? Has he forgotten that I am the great I am that I am, the rose of Sharon, the lily in the valley? Has he forgotten that my other name is Jehovah Jireh? Has he forgotten that I make all things beautiful at my own time? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time I pointed, I will return unto the, my son Abraham. According to the time of life, and Sarah must have a son, whether she likes it or not. Because I have taken something from you. We have eaten, you washed our feet. We have taken some, some bread. We have taken some food. We ate meat. You respected us. So Sarah must have a son. And then Sarah denied saying, I laughed not. For she was afraid and she said, Nay, but thou did laugh, Sarah. Praise the Lord. Sarah, you laughed. Sarah, you laughed. Sarah, you laughed. Verse 20, chapter 21 of Genesis. Chapter 21, Genesis 21. Genesis 21, Genesis 21, Genesis 21, from verse 1, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken, for Sarah conceived and bear Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God has spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bore unto him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. Obedient is better than sacrifice. And Abraham was an hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God had made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. Hallelujah. <laughs> God has made me to laugh. I laugh today. So that those that hear my testimony will laugh with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love God. I love God. And Sarah said, God had made me to laugh. <laughs> so that all that hear will laugh with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children a sock? For I have borne him a son in his old age. I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast. The same day that Isaac was weaned. I see Kala Lagunda. I see many people under the sound of my voice celebrating this year 2022 in a great way. Because this is our year of beautiful things. This is your year of beautiful things. You will celebrate this year in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And that celebration starts from now. Those that are believing God for the fruit of the womb, 
Don't worry whether you are old or you are young. The Lord is going to visit you according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord visited Father Abraham at 100 years. In fact, he, he was 99 years plus. And Sarah was 90 years plus. And this child Isaac, the great precious child Isaac, came when Abraham was 100 years. And I believe Sarah would have been 91 years. That is nothing too difficult for God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Continue to serve him in truth and in spirit. Continue to wait upon him. He will visit you. He is moving from here and there looking for who to bless. Looking for who to deliver. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. With the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing them that are oppressed, delivering people that were in chains, blessing people with the fruit of the womb, blessing people with business ideas, blessing people with finances, blessing people and healing people. Oh, that shall be a portion this week in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That same Jesus is going. Searching for who to bless, and he will not pass you by. He will not pass you by in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He will not pass us by. He will not pass your family by in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you believe it, you will share this message. If you receive it, you will subscribe to this message. If you if you believe it, you will follow us in all our social media handles. And the Lord will continue to bless you without measure. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So shall it be that from today, anything that you lay your hands shall prosper. Whatever you lay your hands shall prosper. This week, the Lord will visit you. This week, Jehovah will visit you. To so take it from there, in the name of Jesus Christ of Christ. Remain blessed. I'll see you next week in part three of Jesus is passing by. See you then.